Today I'm just going to be doing some hanging and a few exercises for my supraspinatus because recently I did a minor tear on my supraspinatus which is one of the muscles in the rotator cuff and I don't have any pain anymore. It feels completely gone but I haven't tested it for this last week because I got surgery a few days ago and I'm still recovering from that so I can't do my full workouts, I especially can't do anything for my legs because I'll reopen my wounds from surgery. So I'm just going to do just my basic daily hanging routine today and then three sets of supraspinatus uh, strengthening. So I always start with a passive hang and this is where I recommend everybody to start with their hanging. I know a lot of people don't really know how to get started with hanging. This is where I would start and you might not even be able to do 60 seconds like what I'm doing. Some people can't do more than 10 seconds when they start hanging and that's fine. What you do is you do, you try to accumulate 60 seconds. That's your first goal with hanging. So if that means you can only do five or 10 seconds, then you do six or 12 sets of, you know, whatever you can do. Try and get 60 seconds of accumulated total. And once you can do that, then you can start playing around with active and passive hanging. So that's where when you're hanging, you pull into active, into depression with your scapula, and then you go passive again. And those transitions will really help strengthen the lats and the scapula stabilizers. That's a really good place to move to. And then uh, you can start moving into some single arm stuff, which is what I'm about to do now. Ooh, and as I talk, I can still feel just how spaced out I am from these pain meds. It's crazy. So <laughs> you have to excuse me. I'm a little bit all over the shop. So I'll do some, <clears throat> I'll do some single arm uh, hanging transitions now. All right. So this is a lot harder than passive hanging, doing it with one arm like this. And I've done a lot of work to be able to get to this point where I can do this. I think a big mistake that people make with looking for workout ideas on YouTube is more often than not, you're watching somebody who has a lot of experience with what they're doing. And when you try to copy, you know, what they're doing in their workout, you can't see the process of what they did to get to where they are. So I did a lot to be able to do this, to be able to do these single arm active and passive hanging transitions. And I'm very happy that I did it because it's made my shoulders very strong and capable. Hanging is so good for you. It's really, really good for shoulder flexibility. It's also incredible for grip strength. And then when you start doing your active and passive hanging like what I'm doing here, it's really, really good for shoulder strength as well. So it's quite weird for me right now. I'm feeling like this balance between just being spaced out and dizzy and having to get down and just getting through it, but I really wanted to just do something because otherwise I would have just been sitting on my butt um, doing no movement at all today. And I don't like doing that. I, I believe that some is always better than none. And there's always something that you can do. And to make the dizziness even worse, I can, someone very nearby me is smoking marijuana and I can smell it very strong. So that's probably making me even more dizzy. It's blowing through the air from the next door neighbors. All right. I don't normally wear gloves, but I use these things sometimes, excuse me, when the calluses on my hands start becoming too painful. And because I do not only hanging every day, but I do either pull-ups or straight arm scapular strength working towards things like tuck levers every day, six days a week. So it's a lot of, you know, a lot of wear and tear on the hands and the, my calluses become quite painful sometimes. And so I just use these sometimes just for my passive hanging because it's just one part of all the hanging that I do that doesn't put so much load on my hands and that works well. So I don't I definitely don't recommend using these all the time because you know you want to you're only as strong as your weakest link and if you 
if you always wear gloves because your skin is the weak link and that's what's preventing you from being able to lift more or do more reps or whatever, then that always remains weak because you're protecting it. So that's just my opinion. That's just how I uh, use gloves. And I don't really like gloves. These, I find these much better for hanging than gloves. Gloves are kind of slippery in their own way. <clears throat> All right, let's get up for my last set. This is the hardest one. So now I'm working <clears throat> on strengthening my supraspinatus and these lateral raises work really well because the supraspinatus is quite active in the first 30 degrees of abduction with your arm. So this movement here and you know we really just want to try and keep the whole body still. You don't want to rush often with like a rotator cuff injury people try and do reps like this because it basically cheats the movement and you create the movement by using other muscles in your body. And we don't want to do that. We want to really keep the movement quite strict and, you know, being very intentional with what we're doing. And I can feel it doing this. I can feel the challenge in my shoulder, which is good. That's the idea. You don't want to skip past that challenging part of the movement and then I always do the other side just to even out my body even though I don't have a tear on this side so this is the kind of thing like there's a few ways that you could use this you could do one or two sets of something like this at the start of your workout to engage the muscles and to switch on the neuromuscular link to make sure that your body is using the supraspinatus, the rotator cuff properly because it kind of goes into like lockdown mode after a rotator cuff tear to try and protect itself. So you could just do one or two sets of these at the start of your workout where you do lower reps. You'd only do like eight to 12 reps or you can do what I'm doing, which is where you do three sets at the end of your workout, just to you know, get those muscles and uh, give them a bit of volume. And it's always gonna depend on how bad your injury is. Everybody's injury is different. And you know, your experience, your preparation, where your body was at when you got injured the kinds of food that you're eating, that you know, the, the state of chronic inflammation that you're in is all going to affect how you respond to exercise like this. And you know, that's why we all need our own customized approach to it. It can be similar to somebody else's, but often it needs to be something that's a bit specific to what you're going through. This was just a really, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it was a minor tear. I was still able to keep training through it to, the, to a pretty high level. Like I could still do my handstands and I could still do all my pull-ups and everything. And I'm right at the end of what I would call a rehabilitation phase. <clears throat> but 
because I'm in a state of recovery from surgery, this is just a good thing to do. Keep me moving, keep me doing something that's working towards my goals, but without, you know, doing anything that's going to reopen my wounds. Man, these pain meds that I'm on have just have made me so dizzy and bleh. I'm really looking forward to getting past the next couple of days where I'm, I don't need this stuff anymore. All right, one more for this side. telling me to go and pick up my son from school so <laughs> I'll see you in tomorrow's workout.